This is Mr. Beck Does Your Homework. This is physics homework number eight, question numbers seven and eight. This is a tricky question in the wording, so let's figure out what it's asking. It says, a place kicker must kick a football from a point 34 meters from the goal. So a place kicker kicking 34 meters from the goal. So what we have is we have these crossbar, like a football goalpost, and we've got a kicker who's going to kick a ball over here. Here's my little kicker. And he's going to kick the ball, and the ball is going to take some path that I don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to continue. He's 34 meters from the goal, so I know this distance here is going to be 34 meters. That's my horizontal displacement by the time that ball gets to the goal. As a result of the kick, the ball must clear the crossbar, which is 3.05 meters high. So that's a bit of information that I get, that this distance right here is 3.05 meters. Now notice that's the crossbar. That's not saying where the football is at that point. So I've got to, I've got to know about that information, but I'm not going to use it yet. When kicked, the ball leaves the ground with a speed of 21 meters per second at an angle of 52 degrees to the horizontal. So I've got my initial kick. And that kick, let me redraw it here, is going to be 21 meters per second at an angle of 52 degrees to the horizontal, so this angle is 52 degrees. To determine if the ball clears the crossbar, what is its height with respect to the crossbar when it reaches the plane of the crossbar? So I want to know, when the ball gets 34 meters down the way, how high is it? So, but not how high is it, I want really the height above the crossbar. So what I'm looking for is this little distance right here. How high above the crossbar? So to get that, what I need is I need my height here, you know, when it hits, right? I need my height total where it's going to be. And then I've got to subtract the crossbar from it. So that, that's where this, this gets tricky. So I'm going to hold this 305 aside for a second, and I'm going to take this, and I need an X world, and I need a Y world. In the X world, of course, my acceleration is zero. In the Y world, of course, my acceleration is negative. 9.81 meters per second squared. In the X world, this football is going to travel 34 meters. So I know that my displacement is going to be 34 meters in the X world. In the Y world, I'm looking for my height, and I'm going to use that and my 3.05 to figure out uh, the height above the crossbar. Um, what else I know? I don't know my final velocity in the Y world, but I'm not looking for that, and I don't need that. But my initial velocity in the x world and the y world can be gotten from this right here, because I know that that 21 meters per second is made up of a velocity in the x direction and a velocity in the y direction. So that's an x velocity and a y velocity. I know my velocity in the x world is going to be my total velocity times the cosine of the angle, 52 degrees. And my velocity in the y direction is going to be my total velocity times the sine of the angle. 52 degrees. This will be my initial y velocity. This will be my initial and final and all the time x velocity because I'm not accelerating. So my velocity in the x world is going to be 21 cosine 52. And my velocity in the y world, my initial velocity, is going to be 21 times the sine of 52. Now that I've got an initial velocity and an acceleration, I'm looking for a height. Gee, if I only had time, that would be great, but I don't have time in the Y world. This is one of those cases where I can get time in the X world because I've got my velocity and my displacement. So if I can get time in the X world, then I can move it over into the Y world. So how do I get time? Well, since I'm not accelerating, I know that since velocity is my displacement over my time, that my time is going to be my displacement over my velocity. And this is X world velocity. So this is going to be my displacement of 34 meters divided by my, my, dis, my velocity, which is going to be 21 cosine 52. So this will give me my time. This is the time it takes to get to this point. That is my first, uh, oh, sorry. So using that time, now I need to find out how high is it when it gets to that time. And that will be y equals v0t plus 1 half g t squared. So now I've got my time, 
from over here, I have my initial velocity here. I know my acceleration is negative 9.81. Make sure you keep it negative. And I've got my time again from over here. So I can solve for my total height uh, using all of that. But that's not quite my answer yet, because let's go back to the question. It says, um, what is its height with respect to the crossbar? So when I get this number, I need to know how much higher or lower than 3.05 it is, because my crossbar is 3.05 meters. So if I take that and subtract my 3.05 meters, then I will get my height above the crossbar. That is going to be my answer to question number seven. Question number eight, don't have much room to do it, but I will. To determine if the ball approaches the crossbar while still rising or while falling, what is its vertical velocity at the crossbar? Well, I want its velocity here. I want to know if it's somewhere on the way up. So maybe this thing takes a path and it's still on its way up, or it's gone up and it's come back down. So to get its height above, sorry, to get its final velocity at that point in time, all I need is a final velocity. And my final velocity is going to be my initial velocity, which I got up here, 21 sine 52. That's positive. Um, plus my acceleration times time. And remember, my acceleration is negative. So this is positive plus acceleration times time. And whatever you get, positive or negative, that will be your answer for question number eight.